Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. Here I am on Roberts Street in London, uh, just off the Strand, which is a famous thoroughfare. Anyhow, so behind me is the house where a number of famous people lived. Thomas Hood, the poet, John Galsworthy, um, the writer, um, uh, Robert Adam, I think, the, the architect, but also Sir James Barry. Sir James Barry I'm going to concentrate on today. So anyway, these, um, number one to number three on this street from here, uh, at one point that was all connected and much of these were built as expensive flats in the early 19th century so very close to the river thames you can't see it but look down there those trees beyond those trees is the river thames so from high up you'd have a splendid vista over old father thames um so james barry is best known for having been the person who wrote peter pan he was born in um Kiri Moore, scotland um in, in 1867. It's in the county of Angus, so it's a tiny place. Um, his father was a weaver. Um, they didn't have that much money. They weren't really poor. A lot of people were properly poor. So he had a rather unhappy childhood. There were ten children in the family, two of whom died, and one of his older brothers died um, in, a, in a, I think, in an ice skating accident. I think the ice broke under him and he drowned at the age of 14. And it was a it was a very heavy blow from his mother, which he never recovered. So James tried to be his brother. Um, to satisfy his mother, even dressing up at him, as him trying to imitate his voice, but it, but it didn't work and she desperately wanted to believe that her beloved son um, was still alive and she made little secret of him being his, his, her favourite. So James felt, grew up, I suppose, and survived his guilt, feeling rather inadequate as sort of ersatz big brother. Um, anyway, uh, he was very gifted. He um, read with avidity and then he went to Edinburgh University. Um, in 1878 and very few people went to university at the time so he's beginning um, rather later than usual he had to do various jobs earlier to save up money they'd moved around Scotland a lot he'd been in Glasgow Academy for a while farmed out to various relatives um, they were Protestants of a, of a very severe puritanical kind so a little colour or sparkle in his life um, but uh, he began writing stories he um, devoured uh, these um, adventure stories with very hackneyed plots such was becoming popular at railway stations at the time penny dreadfuls as they were known and wrote his own play uh, so whilst an undergraduate he began as a theatre critic for one of edinburgh's daily newspapers it was a stage where most people read a newspaper um, every day and the theatre was obviously at the height of its popularity because it was a bit before cinema came along um, anyway later he moved to london he made his made uh, waves as a journalist he was a very short man five foot three uh, with a moustache, which I don't think did anything for him. So quite modest, sometimes quite morose, but uh, was, was friends with many literary figures uh, here, like Yeats. He exchanged letters with um, uh, with uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, who was by this stage was in, in Samoa, that island of the Pacific Ocean, with his American wife and, and uh, his uh, stepson, but they never met face to face. He was given a pressing invitation to move out to Samoa by Stevenson, but he declined. So Stevenson was... Um, perhaps the best popular novelist of the time. Um, he knew George Bernard Shaw, who was a next door neighbour. Um, so he met everyone who was anyone in, in, in literary circles at the time. And that older generation of, of uh, novelists, like, say, Thomas Hardy, who was still alive back then. Um, anyway, so he married, um, but uh, it wasn't a very successful marriage. They had no children. And it was, uh, I'm not saying that makes it unsuccessful, but it was unhappy in other ways. And eventually he discovered his wife was having a long term affair with another man not just for a thrill, but she genuinely loved this other guy. So he wanted to, to end the relationship. Could they separate? No. He wanted to be scared, spare the scandal of a divorce, but that wasn't happening. His wife said that she wouldn't promise not to be with uh, this Gilbert Canaan. So, so Barry then said, well, push has come to shove, I'm going to divorce you. Their names will be dragged through the court. Their names will be dragged through the mud, as it were. But um, some of his um, powerful friends persuaded um, much of a, most newspapers not to cover their, their, their divorce, so his name didn't come up in most newspapers. So his, his reputation was largely spared. Not that it was his fault, but if you got divorced, even if your spouse committed adultery, that was held to be a disgrace for both parties. So he knew Herbert Asquith, the, the, the Prime Minister. It was Herbert Asquith, I think, was it his stepdaughter or something? One of his relatives, anyway, was, was, his, uh, was um, James Barry's secretary. Um, so he published um, lots of novels, um, grown-up novels as well as ones for children, but his, his, his adult novels are, are basically unknown. I've not read any of them. And it's, it's, it's a, a, a common misconception he invented the name Wendy. Wendy already existed, but he did popularise it. 
um, he was friends with the Llewellyn Davis, Davis family. He lived just north of Hyde Park uh, in an area called Bayswater in a large house in the middle of a garden which still stands and the Llewellyn Davis family were his, were his um, neighbours and uh, he was very involved with them and so he got some sort of, he was sort of like a vicarious parent. Well, they could be his children, but he could, he could act as though they were his children, very close to that family. Eventually became legal guardian of the Llewellyn Davis boys. So wrote a lot of his stories originally for them, invented Peter Pan, this boy who never grew up, this um, fictive country called Neverland and all the rest of it, the fairy Wendy. And um, I remember having that read to me when I was little. And I remember when Wendy dies, and if every child of the world says, I believe in fairies, then Wendy will come back to life. Worked for me. So I, I was a fervent believer when I was six, but uh, some people still are. So coming back to um, Sir James Barry, then it was turned into a play and it was wildly popular all over the English speaking world. Uh, this had many iterations as, as a Hollywood film. Um, so, uh, and it indeed inspired Michael Jackson, but don't, don't take that the wrong way. Michael Jackson died an innocent man, I accept his innocence. Back to Sir James Barry. Questions have been asked about his relationship with the Llewellyn Davis's boys. Was it was it um, less than innocent? But um, I know of no evidence that it was uh, there was anything immoral about that. Um, but again, his life was was touched by tragedy because um, one of them drowned in the canal, another of them committed suicide, another one of them was killed in the First World War. So um, he felt that very deeply. Um, despite being lionised by society, he died in many ways quite a lonely man. Um, uh, anyway, so he retired to uh, Scotland. He had been in Gloucestershire for a lot of the, the, the evening of his life, and he's buried in uh, Kirimur, um, where he originally comes from. He'd been knighted some years earlier by George V, so as a baronet, but of course there's no one else to pass the, the baronetcy on to, so it died with him. Um, so that is uh, Sir James Barry. So please follow me on Twitter and Instagram, on Facebook, book online lessons with me in history, in politics, in religious studies. French and law, get me to help you with your dissertation, your essay, uh, your thesis or whatever it may be. And um, yes, I'll be your tour guide in London whenever tourism reopens. Looks like it's not going to be for a couple of months yet. yet. All right, toodle pip.